are going to create a etch and a vinyl project to go on slate. We're going to etch out using some Oracle 651 as a stencil and then we're going to cut out some vinyl as well. I'm here at Crafty Canada Studio which is a fantastic Etsy shop and I will link to it below and we're actually using one of the designs from this shop today. So I've got the design here and you can see from our layers panel it's in lots of pieces so the first thing I'm going to do is ungroup it and then I'm just going to come down and I'm going to hide my mountain. I'm then going to highlight all of this and I'm going to weld because I'm just going to cut this out in one piece in vinyl. Now with my mountain I want to make it slightly bigger and we're actually going to have this in etch and as I say I'm going to cut it out of 651 as a stencil. And that's all I'm going to do to this file. I don't want to do a lot to it. I think it's going to look really effective with the slate and then the etch and then the vinyl. So we're going to go to make it and you can see I've got two mats. So again, I'm going to go to continue. So I'm going to cut my stencil out in 651. So I'm going to have that under a vinyl cut setting. With our 651, we're going to use this as a stencil today because we're actually going to use some etching cream on some slate. So I've just cut my design out the way I usually would. So when you're using vinyl as a stencil, you're going to use it slightly differently. So usually we read around the outside of our design. However, with a stencil, you're actually going to weed out the design itself because you want to, whether you're using paint or etching cream or whatever you're using, you want the actual design to be transferred. So in order to do that it's the design itself that you're going to remove if you're creating a stencil i love using 651 as a stencil it's so easy to work with it's so easy to weed and it's a, just a great product to use as a stencil. The other reason I like using 651 as a stencil is it's actually really inexpensive to buy. So there are some great um, vinyl stencils out there. As you all know, I use the Cricut one a lot. But 651 is a really good alternative if you just want a cheap throwaway stencil. And also, if you can't get hold of some stencil vinyl, this is a great alternative. So once the stencil is completely weeded out, you can see that we've got our design that we've weeded out and we're going to transfer it the same way we usually would. So we're going to place our transfer tape over, we're going to scrape from the front and then the back and then we're going to transfer it onto our slate. So you can see that I've placed my transfer tape onto my slate now. So I'm going to go in with my scraper and I'm going to give it a really, really good scrape. Now, slate can sometimes be tricky. Sometimes it will allow your vinyl to adhere to it straight away. And other times it can be a bit of a nightmare. So one trick that I always use is I place my transfer tape over my scraper and I pull back from my vinyl. And I find that this works really well. Now you'll see that there is some lift up here, but that's okay because we're going to fix that in a moment. For the time being, we just want our design to transfer as well as it can. And slate, as I say, is just one of those tricky kind of surfaces that you have to kind of play with a bit. But I find that this technique works really well. And I use this a lot, especially with canvas as well. Transferring vinyl onto canvas can be a bit tricky. And again, this technique is great for that. So I'm then just going to go in with my finger to begin with and I'm just going to completely smooth down my vinyl. Now because we're using this as a stencil and we're going to use etching cream, you want to ensure that you've got no lift up and no gaps because you don't want any of the cream to bleed through. So once your 651 stencil is fully adhered to your slate, you're going to get yourself a fluffy brush and I do find that a fluffy brush 
mesh works best. And I've also got some Armour Etch Cream. Now, I find that this stuff is really pungent, and I don't know if it's just me, but I would advise using this in a well-ventilated room, because, as I say, I find it really noxious. So we're just going to go in with our brush and dip it into our Armour Etch. And then you want to apply a nice, thin, even layer all across your design. And I always go in with a nice, thin layer first. And this is the process that I find works for me. I know other people do it slightly differently, but this has always worked well for me. So just a nice, thin, even layer. And you want it to be as even as you can possibly get because you want the etch to kind of be that nice even look across. You don't want heavy bits and light bits. You want a nice etch all the way across. Once my thin layer is done, I then go in with a thicker layer. And again, you want it to be as even as possible. And you'll also see I've got quite a large border around my design. This is just to stop my brush going over the edge onto the slate. We don't want that either. So as I say, I first go in with a thin layer and then I go over the top with a thicker layer. And again, you do want to try and be as even with this as possible. So once you've applied your second thicker layer, you're then going to leave it for about 15 to 20 minutes. And I leave it for 20 minutes. I'm then going to take it indoors and I'm going to run it under some lukewarm water. I'm then going to remove the vinyl and I'm just going to gently give it a rub with some kitchen towel just to remove any excess cream. You then want to leave it to dry for about five to 10 minutes and you'll see as it dries, the etch really starts to come up. So you can see that that's now etched and it's all dry. And it works really well with the 651. It's a great inexpensive vinyl to use when stenciling. I've also weeded and already transferred my rainbow vinyl. So I'm just going to go and work out where I want that to sit. So I just think that this looks lovely. You've got your patterned rainbow vinyl, you've got the etch, and then you've got the black of the slate as well. And I just think it looks so, so effective. And it's so easy to do. The hardest part of this is leaving the etching cream to dry. It's so tempting to take it off early. Please, please don't.